Okay, uh, let me welcome you all to this uh, Solid Edge clinic. Uh, this clinic is uh, on some of the aspects of ST4 assembly that you probably saw at launch seminars or if you haven't seen before. will be new and we'll be going into a little bit depth, uh, of a little bit more depth than we did at the uh, launch seminars. The idea of these webinars, these clinic webinars, is to, uh, to give you a little bit more information uh, a little bit of depth so you can start using some of these new features. Today uh, looking at just a couple of features um, I'll just briefly in introduce the assembly shortcut keys we'll be using uh, some of those and uh, we'll also be using a little um, a little uh, We'll be looking a little bit at the uh, at the uh, relationship options with the move copy command, and uh, the options that are available with that. They're uh, they're quite significant. So uh, um, let's uh, let's move on on that. Okay. Uh, at the end of this, I think you'll have an under better understanding of how these features work. Let's take a look at the um, the shortcut keys just very quickly. Um, when you're in a synchronous assembly you can uh, select either a part or a face on a part uh, to make changes and uh, you can select that from the uh, from the ribbon bar but uh, some people like to use the control space bar to select between them and uh, just makes life a little easier if we take a quick uh, a quick look at that just to show you um, I've got an assembly up here um, if we look at our select, I've got face priority and part priority. Right now I'm in part priority because if you look at the cursor, it's got a little uh, gold uh, icon next to it. If I control spacebar, you'll see it goes white. It's in the face select, so I can select a face. Select uh, control spacebar again. It's in the part select, so we'll select a part. Pretty simple, but uh, something that's quite worthwhile. Uh, hide previous level, which we've uh, had in assemblies since day one, as far as I can remember. You can access that with a control Q. So you can put it on your quick bar. You can, of course, uh, have it uh, accessible in the normal command bar. And you can use control Q to hide previous level. Each time you press it, of course, it will flip over. So it'll hide previous level, go back to previous level. I'll show you this next one uh, as, we, uh, as we're going through some of the exercise, the control shift D. Um, it's just a suspend, suspend movement when it will get in the road. Uh, of course spacebar with anything synchronous will uh, turn on the add remove um, mode so just remember if you uh, if you uh, need to connect select more than one component face whatever uh, press the spacebar and it will put the uh, add uh, the plus minus next to the cursor. We'll see that as we go through. Um, shift and spacebar is the selection manager. Those who uh, have been working with Synchronous for a little while are aware of the selection manager. I'm not going to be talking about that specifically today, but you can access that these days from the shift spacebar rather than the um, rather than uh, the command bar. Uh, a right, right mouse button click um, gets you into the shortcut menu, of course, um, but you've now got a new uh, hide all, show all user interface. Let's take a quick look at that just so you're familiar. Um, so if I right click, go to show all hide all component. Uh, it's off my screen at the moment. Let me bring it back for you. I've got a little um, this dialog box. Now I can turn things on and off and the dialog box stays present. It's, uh, it's quite a nice user interface. So you can set up what you want and hit the apply. So if I say uh, I want the reference planes, hit apply. We'll see all the reference planes come on. I want to turn the reference planes off. Hit the apply. It stays there so you can see what's happened. Hit close when you're ready to finish it. Okay, moving along. Steering wheel changes in the assembly. You saw me do some of this in, uh, in, the, um, in the launch, uh, both webinar and seminars. But we've got a new quick bar that comes up and I'll just go through some of the icons on there. It, as in the past we've had a move copy icon if it's uh, not it's got a white background we will move whatever was selected if we click on this it gets an orange background, highlighted background 
and we'll see a copy made of whatever we've selected. That can be multiple things that we've selected. It can be sub-assemblies, multiple sub-assemblies, parts. It's got to be actual objects. It's not done with faces. Um, this one I'll come back to, the move select related faces, move and copy select, select related faces. This is very clever and you'll see that as we go forward. Um, the relationship options and again it's used in conjunction with the move and copy. Um, in the past uh, it would show us what um, uh, assembly relationships failed. This allows us to automatically repair those and we'll look at this in a little bit, bit more detail uh, a little bit later on. So we've got the copy components options uh, in the bar. It just simply copies to a new location. Um, but you, the actions you want to go through is to, when you select a part, you want to make sure you put your steering wheel on a key point on that part so that you can move that steering wheel to another key point in the object. So it makes it, it's logical to do. Um, for example, in this exercise here, if we wanted to move this bracket along to the next set of slots, we would just do, use a move. Um, but quite often what happens if when we're moving, we're trying to pick an object here, it'll, it'll be underneath what we're moving and we want to suspend that. You'll see how I do that in a moment. Um, what do we copy or move? Uh, copying of course uh, is embedded occurrences, frames, pipes, wire harnesses. Um, they can't be moved, they can only be copied, sort of fairly obviously, um, and they don't get selected by themselves, they've got to be as part of a, a sub-assembly or some other uh, set of objects. Okay, uh, just to finish that off, adjustable parts and adjustable assemblies behave as you would expect. Uh, they come through uh, in their in as adjusted state in both cases and will uh, do what you expect. Let's have a quick look at uh, an example here. Okay, what we want to do is just pick up this bracket here and move it. So on my quick bar it's set to not copy, so it's move, but I've got to move it from a logical place. If I just have the steering wheel, the, um, the steering wheel where it is, it's going to, you know, I can move it about, but it's hard to locate it. So what I'm going to do is to place that steering wheel just by picking up the, the center object, uh, ball there, and I'm going to put it on the end of that line just there. So where I put it is just at the end of this line, the junction of those two. So it's on a logical point, it's on the top corner of the slot. Now what I'm going to do is to move the, pick the uh, major axis of the steering wheel and it'll move back and forth. And I want to move that across to that slot, just to the top corner of the slot. Now you can't, <laughs> you know, Murphy's Law applies. I, I know where it's going to go because I've picked that, that vector there, but if you are unsure, control shift and then the D key suspends movement of the object here and uh, it's affected my recording software. Um, my apologies, this is, uh, I didn't expect this one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to do that by feel. It's gone in there. Now we get this, and I alluded to this before, assembly relationship options dialog comes up. In the past, uh, that's how it was set, do not repair unsatisfied relationships. We didn't see this option in ST3, but when we place that, what we'd get is saying, okay, the relationships must be either deleted, suppressed to complete the operation. So if I just suppress the relationships that didn't satisfy, what we'll see is that there's a, 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 a mate offset that, hasn't, uh, that can't be satisfied. And we can go and do that manually, but for now, Let's, uh, let's leave off this one and go back to our uh, PowerPoint. The next thing I want to have a look at is when we're doing this move and copy, use this select related faces. Now this is a, uh, looks a little bit like magic when we do it, but what we're actually doing here is, again with synchronous parts, we're sele selecting synchronous faces, anything that has an assembly relationship in the assembly will come with it. Now that sounds a bit strange, um, uh, and that, but how it works is like this. We're selecting a component here, it has assembly relationships, we modify it, the underlying parts become modified. Uh, let's take a look at an example, it's probably the best way again. 
let's go back to uh, Solid Edge and open up the um, Let me just get the right file. That's the one. Okay, um, just make this look a little prettier. You'll notice, and those of you who came to the, uh, the launch seminars, the uh, right click menu and assembly has been shortened quite considerably and made easier to use. So right click, we want to go to Simplify Adjusted and Adjustable, just set that to as designed. Now what I'm doing here, um, let me like make sure I turn the geometry on, we need, we need to have the parts we're going to modify of course activated. What I'm going to do is I want to pick the, the height of this is incorrect and the overall height of this assembly needs to be higher, so parts need to be modified etc. So I'm going to pick the top plate there. Uh, Select my spacebar, and you notice there's a plus minus attaches to my cursor, and I want to add that uh, bearing holder in there. And having got those two, all I need to do is to pick the secondary vector and move upwards. Now, that'll just move those two, as we can see. I just right click to put that back, and I'm going to turn on move select. When we do the move, select the related faces. Now, when I click on that, You'll notice there's some ghost related faces. Just pay attention to this one here. You'll see that the mate and align relationship has been picked up. So as I move this up, let the system catch up a little bit, you'll see it's actually modifying the components here. Let's make that uh, 60 millimeters taller, just by way of example. And that's precisely what it's done. It's modified this component's common all the way through. It took its mate, moved uh, moved it along with it. This has to be a synchronous, these have to be synchronous parts, has to be a synchronous assembly, uh, or, or an assembly with synchronous parts in it. Um, there's no such thing as a synchronous assembly anymore. Okay, so if we want to make another change, let's say these are a bit close to the gear wheel here. I want to move those again, move select, pick the selected, uh, the uh, associated um, mates and aligns, and we'll see uh, mates and aligns highlight within the assembly. And I just move this back. There we go. Let's say uh, 30 millimeters. Be precise. And you'll see that everything's updated. All the holes have updated, and it worked as as expected. It's sort of beyond the expectations a little bit, isn't it? That's uh, that's something that's very productive. It looks like magic, but it's quite, it's very, very usable in my opinion. Okay, moving all right along. Uh, what have I got next? Okay, when we're making changes um, in that first exercise, when we move something or uh, more so copy it, we will break some of the assembly relationships. Now, um, the default setting for ST4, when we do that, is in the assembly relationship options, which is new in ST4, is do not repair. So it has the same uh, functionality as ST3. When you did this in ST3, uh, moved or copied something, you'd see the, uh, you could move the objects and you'd get some of the assembly relationships would stay there, some of the mates might stay there, but some of them might uh, might be broken and you'd have to manually repair them. This is a way of automatically repairing them. So um, it gives you uh, a set of options uh, that enables you to find the geometry and other co components and repair them. Um, it actually uses the same code as the relationship assistant that's been around for some some years and it affects mates, planar aligns, axial aligns, connect and tangencies. Other relationships that, if, that, uh, that it finds and gets modified are, will be either set to float or they're suppressed or deleted by the operation and you'll see how that works in a moment. I'll, I can go through a lot of detail on this but rather than do that uh, let's take a look uh, let's take a look at uh, look at Solid Edge itself and uh, work through it. Um, let me just get the right part file. Or assembly file. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, what we've got here, let's just uh, enable all the geometry. Because I'm going to be using most of it. Let's just flip it over. First thing we want is this caster. Um, that's tremendous, but we want to make some uh, copies of that. So I'm just going to put the steering wheel, again, put on a location that's logical, on the center of that circle. And for some reason, it's not going to let me pick the... Um, that's not letting me pick them. Okay, let me do that again. Just selecting individual components and seeing if I can. Uh, I seem to have some selection problems because of the uh, broadcast screen at the moment, so just bear with me for a second. It uh, might take a little while for this to pick up. Yeah, I've got some selection issues. Okay, I'll try a different way of doing that. Yeah, it doesn't seem to uh, want to play ball with me for some reason. No. Okay, we'll try it a different way. I think it has something to do with the fact that I'm recording. There we go. Yeah, it's uh, dislocated my... Uh, yeah, it's to do with the recording. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a copy of this so we don't forget to copy. And we want to move it in this direction. And you notice my uh, key points here. I've got everything turned on. But if we say we just want a center point there, I want to select the center point in there. Now, you see that's difficult to select. So Control Shift D to suspend the movement. And yes, I've still got this problem with my recording. So I've got to do this manually. OK. I get this option up and I do want to repair the relationships and what I'm going to say is repair unsatisfied relationships and adjust offset values. Say OK and I get a another dialog up here saying what parts do you want to use to mate or align to? So I just select the parts that I want, tick that off and uh, I didn't pick the hole correctly so bear with me again. The recording process is going to be awkward in this. I can see that. That should have aligned on the whole. Yep. Okay, for some reason that's not picking up on that one, and I'm not sure why. What we've seen there is that didn't pick up. Um, so it should have picked up that alignment in there. It hasn't. It's suppressed it, actually. And if I unsuppress it, it will be OK. So it should have replaced that. OK, there we go. No, it hasn't uh, picked that up. OK, bear with me for a moment. I'll see if I can do something else about that. It's uh, my recording process, unfortunately, is uh, destroying this. No. 
Okay, let me uh, deal with this a slightly different way. I've recorded this previously and I'll just play this back for you so we can run through this and you can see what happens. Bear with me and I'll get that for you and we'll just pop this over here and Okay, we're starting off at the uh, at the same point, um, he says. So, what we need to do is to be able to pick the um, pick this wheel assembly here, and we've picked the uh, the sub assembly. We could pick the individual parts if we needed to. We're going to position the steering wheel onto the center of the circle there. Set the action to copy, don't forget that. And then we're going to drag that and copy it across to the other set of holes. Now, as you saw before, I couldn't pick that hole because it was underneath and I can't use the control D because it affects recording software, which I can't fix on the fly. So he suppressed it, selected the hole, and now we're going to say, OK, let's um, by default it's do not repair but we're going to change that option um, we're going to change that so that we can uh, fix the um, fix the uh, assembly relationships between the uh, part here and the um, and the uh, and the base plate with the holes in it so we're going to say attempt to restore, re repair the uh, unsatisfied relationships now, some of the relationships will be satisfied. The mates, of course, the mate from this to this was still remain the same. We're going to say adjust offset values where possible. So when we say OK to that, what's going to happen is it's going to ask us what do we want to apply the relationships to? What do we want to sort out the relationships to? So we're going to select the OK. Um, we could just op uh, the other option we've got here is just to adjust the off offset values, and the third option we've got is replace to new faces, if we've got those. But in this case, um, I think the adjust offset values is probably the best uh, is the be is the best option, and that will uh, offset the. Um, I think it's going to be the mate here. And of course, we can rebuild all the relationships if we want to. You can see that option there. Okay, the next menu comes up, which is selected parts. What are the parts we want to select to to uh, accomplish the mate to? We've got another option in there is we can say all other parts or currently shown parts. But in this case, we'll just take that one, uh, accept it, and then the, what we've got highlighted is that sub-assembly, and we could see those relationships would be reconstructed. We we'll just re-highlight that, and you can see the um, it set the uh, the the align to a uh, to a float, the um, the mate relationship to the base, of course, was uh, remained satisfied. It was okay, and the uh, hole, it picked up a new hole location. So it um, it offset that, that last relationship. Okay, we want to make another couple of copies of these wheels. So, we can put, so we're selecting from the edge bar again. Just select both of them using a shift select, of course. Place the, cur uh, place the uh, steering wheel on the center of one of the holes. And uh, Bet you forgets. Yes, forgot to hit the copy. That's okay. Just right click, go back, select the copy. You notice that's highlighted, so it's it's on. And again, uh, Control Shift and D to suspend the movement. And then he's going to pick the end hole there. And again, our assembly relationship options come up. And we've got the uh, the, the same select, of course. 
This time we're going to replace or rebuild all the relationships to the new faces. So it's going to find a new set of relationships. Uh, interestingly, of course, the mates will still be there because they, they remained exactly the same. So when we look at those, we'll see the um, we'll see those relationships, just picking either one of those. We see we've got a, a mate between the uh, the base plate and the uh, and the base of the uh, the swivel base, and then we've got two uh, axial lines on the holes. So that was the simplest thing for it to find, but it found those relationships and created them automatically. And it's very quick at doing that. Okay, the next. Um, the next option is to um, pick these um, these uprights, this upright here, and we want to make a copy of that over the other side. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. This one. Uh, swing the swing the steering wheel around, um, pick the long vector, and move it to the in this case the end point. That's pretty easy to pick up, so we don't need to suppress. Um, and again, we've got the same relationship sets, but this time I'm going to say, remember it. So that when we do this again, it's going to remember what the last one was. And this is a rebuild all of them. We've selected in this case. This time, uh, we're going to select, uh, oh, you can see the relationships it's built, built there, which are pretty logical. And now we're going to select what we want to copy again. We're going to copy those three items down to the other end. And with the same process again, pick a point on the uh, on one of the objects we want to co copy, the source object, and move that down to a point, which is the end point on the uh, on the edge there. And again, we use the Control Shift D to suppress it on the on the way. Uh, again, with it, it's this time, it's not asking us for the um, for the type of rebuild we want, because it, we we said use the last one that we used. We can, of course, always change that. We'll see that in a moment. Now we can see the relationships it created and the new relationships that it created. Of course, the mates will remain the same because they don't have to change. Now what I'm doing is just selecting the, uh, the bottom uh, uh, brace pieces and the bottom plate. And we're just removing the, because we went to remove, uh, on the uh, on the cursor, just removing the extra base plates we picked up because all we want to do is copy the edge bars and the uh, and the plate itself. And this time we're going to position the, the uh, steering wheel on the bottom. Make sure we've got a copy on, and pull that up to the top. We'll do a Control Shift D again to suppress and click to place. Tick that off. Now. This time we're not going to use selected parts. We're not going to select them. We're going to say shown parts, all the shown parts. It'll go and find what parts it needs to build relationships to. And what we've seen there is it's gone out and built all the relationships that are necessary and, uh, and created the object. That's pretty straightforward. So you can see that uh, on, our, uh, on, our, um, on, the, uh, on the quick bar here, we've got an option, uh, the option uh, dialog and it was attempt to replace all relationships and we turned on the remember remember that one um, that might be our default but we can change that at any time as you've seen so we've been, gone from a fairly simple assembly to something fairly complex in a very short period of time the point about this is that it's um, pretty easy to use when I've gone through it it looks fairly complicated but it's not uh, this movie will be available uh, on our website so you can review that. There's uh, quite extensive help on this, but it's worthwhile just having a little practice yourself. If we go through, um, there's some, you know, there's a whole lot of uh, what's going to happen with family of assemblies and all of those sorts of things. It's fairly logical what will happen. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, we've sort of run our half hour, I want to keep these things to about half an hour and we've got a, a question and answer time coming up but I'll just talk about what we're having n next time which is two weeks away, Thursday the 29th, same time and we'll be talking about draft and I'll be sending out emails, uh, invitation emails for that uh, webinar next, um, early next week. So uh, mark that one on your calendar. So if you've got any questions, uh, now's a good time, you can just type them into your little dialog box on the uh, on the webinar uh, uh, toolbox 
and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Everyone's gone quiet. <laughs> um, but again, if you do have any uh, questions about these or anything, you can call support, um, send in an email. If you've got the other thing too is you've got any suggestions about um, how you'd like, you know, what you'd like to uh, uh, to see in these clinics. The clinics are here for your benefit. Uh, send an email to me. Uh, my email address is on the next screen, I think, or on the first screen. I forget. Uh, that's our web address. But my email address was on the first screen. It's mark at edgeplm.com.au. Uh, everybody in the company is uh, has their email address as their first name, so it's uh, it's pretty simple. It's the advantage of being a relatively small company. Um, we'll probably get another David at some stage, and we'll have to change it. So uh, <laughs> at that stage, we will. Uh, if you've got any questions, as I say, just type them in, and uh, we'll see if we can answer them. If you haven't, that's fine as well. If you've learnt something, that's good. Um, but uh, by all means, you know, if you think of something later, just send it in to us. And if you've got any suggestions, please let me know because um, as I start building the schedule going forward, uh, I'm looking forward about three or four weeks at the moment, but um, we can adapt fairly quickly to, uh, to the things that you want. Um, as I said, next, um, next one will be on draft. There'll be a few, things, a few, a few of the new things in draft. And uh, after that, I think I'm looking at something in part, but I don't have the, uh, the list in front of me. Okay, um, thank you for your attendance. If, uh, if there hasn't seemed to be any questions, um, I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time. Uh, and another thing, you know, if you've got suggestions about time, is this a good time? Um, is a Thursday a good day? Would it be better to be a Monday, Tuesday or something? It seems to be Thursday is fairly popular with most people. But uh, again, up to you. Let me know and uh, let me know about topics. OK, thank you for your, uh, for your attention and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks time. And I'll have this uh, recording thing sorted out so I can use a Control Shift D without it killing everything for me. Uh, talk to you soon.